our officials. You're talking about VAR as some sort of magnificent computer that's... Hello, welcome back to a Touch Long Long Podcast. This is episode 124. Today we are going to preview this week's Premier League fixtures in Manchester City and UEFA, which has dominated... The impact. The impact that that will have on... It's not simply on Man City. There's a lot of things to consider with this debate. We're then going to have a look at the Champions League and the Europa League. Perfect in every way. <laughs> it's a human error. Mental health stuff. Yeah, mental health stuff is the next section. We're going to have a look at mental health we're looking at uh, fan and player online interactions. Then we're going to reopen the doors to Kind Club once again. Then we are going to stop. Just play the music there. How much it's, more it's, honest could he be in his challenge? It is a bit. Manchester City versus UEFA. What's the impact of this, first and foremost? Then? Okay, there's loads. Which, do you want to talk about the man impact on Manchester City? Bigger scale. Are, are Manchester City or are the surrounding? Because there's a lot of different variants that need to be looked at in this situation. Let's talk about Man City for a start then, the impact on Man City. Sergio Aguero, Sergio Aguero, Sergio Aguero, Sergio Aguero has said previously that he's going to stay at Man City until they win the Champions League. He is towards the end of his career. Now, if he does want to win, if he does want to retire, if his aim is to retire with a Champions League winner's medal, can will he look at this and think, the closest Man City have come is a quarterfinal. That's the closest they've got uh, under Pep. So if there's two years out of it, is he th will he sit there and think, oh, well, do you know what? I could probably go to another top club is in the Is this you or can Aguero speaking? No, Aguero speaking. Right, so Aguero right, speaking. Right, right. He could go to another club in, in go Europe. Go do it again, do it again. Okay. So Aguero could go to another top club in Europe. No, do it as Aguero. Okay. I could go to another right. top club in Europe and I could win the Champions League in those two years. But he's more likely to win the Champions League. Probably, I could argue that he's more likely to win the Champions League at another club than Man City, even if they weren't banned from the Champions League. Because, yeah, they go, they're go. they always out, going all out to win it. But like I said, Pep, in his time there, the closest he's got them is quarterfinal. I think the best that Man City can hope mm -hmm. for is that they it's reduced to a one-year ban. One year ban. I think that's the best that they can hope for. Arsene Wenger's gripe, the chip on his shoulder. I like this story when it came out. Yeah. Because it, it follows the impact of Arsene Wenger whilst he was at Arsenal playing within the rules and regulations of financial fair play. Now he's in a position where he is, is in a very high position mm -hmm. within the ranks and can dictate financial fair play and what dictates breaking that law and the punishment of breaking the law. Yeah. So he is... Responsible, I'd say. He, he this decision maker to drop this on Man City, but he's at the he's on, on the a, board, yeah, yeah, on he's, a fair and a, and, a, and a just way. So I like the fact that there's, he's got a he's got a shoulder chip because of financial fair play. Because Arsenal, as we know, were, were well within the bounds, the realms of financial fair play, when others, yeah. Chelsea, Man City, were not, and they 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 pushed the game forward because the sheer amount of money they put into it, at, progressing it in some ways, but also ruining it in causing a, a massive divide in another. The thing so is that's that one, one aspect. And then the second of all, to go along with that, will the punishment be justified? And is it ever enough? Do, do teams ever get punished enough fully when they miss like a transfer window okay. or th this type of punishment when they throw all the law at it? The problem that I have with this entire story is that I don't agree with the financial fair play. Mm. In, in the way that it's being used. I agree with the way the financial fair play, for the reasons that it was brought in, it was to stop clubs doing a Portsmouth or to do a Leeds um, and to overspend outside of their means and to not be sustainable at the amount that they were set. But then you've however, got loopholes. Well, however, Man City don't fall into that. Man City uh, have spent all this money and at no point are they, at any point, not being able to sustain that because... The money that's been pumped into them is from their owner. Now, financial fair play, if it was brought in as a way to make sure that teams, like I say, didn't do a Portsmouth and didn't do a Leeds, fine. Man City are never going to do a Leeds because they've got a super rich owner. Times have changed. So 
the, the, why shouldn't an owner come in and if he's willing to and he can afford to, why shouldn't he be able to pump in money, his own money into a club? It's no different to if you work for now, if you work for an independent, say, coffee shop in a tiny little kiosk and someone buys that coffee shop from the current owner and then says, right, we're going to move to bigger premises. We're going to buy more expensive coffee machines. We're going to buy more expensive equipment to run the coffee shop. What's going to happen? Are they going to come in and go, well, hang on a minute. No, can you afford that? And he's like, well, it's my money. I can do what I want. It's my coffee shop. Man City's owner should, any owner, should be able to pump their own money into a football club and but, spend it if they can afford to. And but, Man City can. Don't you think that brings a, a fundamental divide to the game itself? There already is a divide. Well, I know, but it's because... There of, already it, was a divide it's because before of, financial fair play. It's because of moves like this, though. No, it's Man United, as a Man United fan, there was a massive divide when the Premier League first started. When the Premier League started, it caused a divide in English football because it created the league above. It, it completely decimated. It meant the Premier League was money rich straight away from advertising and from uh, TV revenue. That has only increased to the point now where if you are a mid-table championship club to a mid-table Premier League club, it's like they're being on a different planet. Teams like so, Man United and teams like Liverpool they had to, to afford the stadium and they've balanced it well. And they did well. They won't impact their financial fair play because of how much money is in now. A, a multi-billionaire owner comes in and buys Sheffield United. Can't he? Why shouldn't he? Because the only she, that could. Let's end though. I mean, we're already talking about a hyper-extended, hyper-real amount of money which goes into the game. Like we can't fathom it, and people can't get their heads around it because it's that. It's like a capitalist system, like beyond comprehension within a football rock model it does look it will end where where does that end it will end when a club has a multi-billionaire owner who buys all these players and and then pulls out of the the club and the club can't sustain it that's how it lends however man city's owner is not going to do that psg's owner is not going to do that um, you, the Agnelli at uh, Juventus, which just deep to be, dived into this. Jesus yeah. Christ, we're, we're, we're in too deep. We are in very deep. We We've gone through to, the looking glass. Let's do a full circle now. Come back to my original point because there's a third aspect. My that brain hurts. Here. The third aspect which needs to be looked at capitalism, in, commodity <laughs> fetish, I and mean, players. Well, Jesus. In the if Man City appeal, which they have done, and it's in the hands of the Court of Arbitration of Sport. And this situation drags on for months, yeah? Whoever finishes ninth will literally be sat there at the end of the season, if the decision hasn't been made in May, thinking we're not in Europe. But if Man City then in July get knocked out of the Champions League and they lose their appeal, they will then be in the Europa right. League. My brain's hurting here. There's a lot of things like that. So we're going to have to split this up and go back into this after more gonna, things come clear. What we're going to do, we'll, we'll leave it, we'll let the dust settle, hurts. and then we'll come back to this once there is more I news. I thought we were just going to do a, a rough guide. Oh. When there's more news, we'll, re, we'll bring it back up. Oh, my brain hurts. Paso de Goy, Castilla de Andalucía de Valdivia, Tejen, Sol Ecuador. We are going to cover the interaction on social media, especially between fans and players. We're going to talk about uh, mental health issues. We're going to talk about how we need to start realizing that these people are how not players just, are perceived. They're not commodities. Yeah, how they're and how they're people. How the footballers. I don't care if they play for a for a League Two side or they play for Real Madrid. They're people, and they have the same issues as us. Escudo tatuado muy dentro de tu corazón. Marcas el guerrero ADN forjado en la evolución. Think twice. Be kind. Oh, that's the message. That's literally it. If we all went around and just thought, right, what we'll do is we'll, we'll be kind to one another, how much better would everything be? Yeah, but humans aren't that good about things. Maybe it's time we had a rethink. <laughs> so My brain hurts. We've hit, we've hit some big, big topics today. Big topics this week. My head's hurting. Sangre de los seres no más si se puede. Estrella queremos. Ser un escudo que lleves muy dentro de tu corazón. Ser un escudo que lleves muy dentro de su corazón. 
Okay. It's time to reopen the door to Kind Club. Kind Club is our the section of our podcast where what we do, it was my youngest daughter's idea that we've basically stolen off her. Mm. Um, we look at the pe- who is doing good things in football. We look for the positives, we look for the inspiring, we look for the motivating, we look for the kindness in the world of football. Who is doing what? We are going to induct. I want to induct into this into Kind Club this week. I want to induct Dean Windass. If you're not following him on on Twitter, you should. He is, he's so honest on there. Like so, when he he will post videos telling people, you know, get out there, and it's a motivational like ninety seconds of motivational speaking. Basically, he will discuss when he's feeling down, and he will say, "I've had a bad day." Dean Windass comes from a time when footballers and men were yes. brought through as you do not talk about your feelings yeah, basically absolutely. men don't talk about their feelings yeah, and true. Dean Windass has broken it and yeah. just p- kicked down barriers and he then tells other men that are watching and football fans because that's who's following Dean Windass yeah. that it's okay to talk about your feelings you, and he's done such an amazing job with it he's he's wonderful uh, um, welcoming Dean Windass oh, no, a, Dean Windass. a very very welcome addition yeah. can, I, can I give an honourable mention of course we can. Um, uh, a, a true hero of, of, of football and a true hero of the world passed away this week. Yep. Mr. Harry Gregg, who was Manchester United's goalkeeper during the Busby Babes era. He's such a hero because he was on the plane in 1958 that crashed. He came round. Mm-hmm. He was unconscious. He came round and the plane's on fire and he's badly injured and his first thought... Instead of getting away from it, he went back into the plane and he pulled people from the wreckage. And if it wasn't for Harry Gregg, the 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 people that that would have died from that crash, it was an horrific amount of people that died in that crash regardless. But if it was not for Harry Gregg, that number would be a lot higher than it was. He selflessly went back into a burning plane after, after being a, in a plane crash and pulled people from the wreckage. Muy dentro de mi corazón. Es un escudo que llevas muy dentro de tu corazón. Es un escudo que llevas muy dentro de tu corazón. Es un escudo. Let's go.